Hello guys and welcome back to the Isle of Wight. I hope you're well, I hope you've had a good week. Last time round we worked on the beautiful Ride Pier. Now it wasn't exactly as the Ride Pier looks in real life but I was very pleased with how it came out. The fact it was functional and the cleansiness it looked in the end was I think acceptable. Um, obviously it'd be nicer if we could have used a bit more in terms of a pier look, um, especially on the main actual main grounds but with the limitations of the game it was the best that I could achieve and I think it looks really nice as a model itself so that was the ride pier and in episode 5 we're gonna be working on something a little bit different but along the same lines we're gonna stick to this area and we're gonna work on the ride hovercraft area so the ride hovercraft area um, it's called hover travel and it provides the fastest route to the island from mainland UK. So there are a few ways of getting across. Obviously we've already done one of the ferry terminals which you can get on with a, as a passenger or with your vehicle. But this particular one is the actual only in the world's only year round passenger hovercraft serviced area. Um, so the, f the actual ferry itself takes you directly to the shore at South Sea or Ride in just 10 minutes. So it's one of those fastest routes possible to get onto the island. And it is a very unique and amazing looking area as well. And I mean, just the look of hovercrafts themselves in city skylines fascinates me. So I really, really wanted to get this down. Um, and that's what we're gonna do today. So as you'll see now on camera, we are just working on the foundation. So I decided to use these keys rather than plobble asphalt because of the way it's so easy to make these ramps. Um, you can do that a lot easier here using the, um, the network facilities within the game. If we use the um, proper asphalt or something and use PO to change it, it just wouldn't work so well and it would be a lot of tinkering to do. So this is a quick and in my opinion the best way to achieve a good look. Now there's quite a lot of these keys now on the workshop and I thought we'll go with this one. It's um, a little bit different to what it is in um, in actual real life ride, but I thought that these actually look really nice, quite smart. Um, so we went with these types of keys. And the actual main ground here, it's not really sand, it is kind of like a concrete area um, where the hovercraft sort of bays in uh, with some um, sort of beachy area around it. So I thought we'd try and imitate that and uh, make full use of these beautiful decals we have and really try and make this area look very unique, very different, away from the sort of beach and sand, um, and just see what we could sort of develop with a lot of decals on top. There's been a, it's been a little while since I've had a lot of time to work with decals, certainly in terms of building up a texture. Um, and I think these looked really, really good. The texture that I think really works well are these sort of, I think they're moss um, decals, and I've never really used them that much. It's only been recent that I've um, noticed them and if you do page down them a little bit into the ground, they do look amazing. I mean, they just give that sort of worn and old look that you'd expect to see with the sort of corrosion of the sea, seaweed, sand on the concrete. It, it just looked and works really well. So I'm really happy with how that's come out. And you'll also note as well how much easier it is when you're working with these um, keys as well. You can change things around you can adapt things you can you know use and move it bend things around and just get them into shape a lot easier than it would be perhaps if you did go with the um, the route of plop asphalt or something um, so that works out quite nicely and whilst we're on the matter at the moment if you are wondering yes I am still slightly suffering with the flu so I probably sound a little bit more nasally than I would do normally um, so apologies for that but I am on the mend and like I said I wanted to get these videos out for you guys um, and this one I was working on last week and I just said to myself I need this to go out I need this to go out this weekend and um, well you're getting it slightly earlier than normal so um, yeah I was really looking forward to showing this off the cinematics at the end are probably some of my favorites so make sure you stick around for that if you're not too fussed with the um, way I built it just jump straight over and have a look because um, it's definitely something to um, to have a look at. Now these keys did have an option to have some with the actual fences around them and you're probably wondering why I didn't choose to do that. 
The reason was is I wanted to put the fences in a few other sort of locations which would have looked a bit silly if we used these, those particular keys. Now what we're working on here is these are the sort of water wave brakes. I'm not sure what the technical term is for these, but if you know, let me know in the comment section. But these are basically ways of separating the beach area up. And you'll see these very commonly in certainly UK beaches. Um, they are slowly sort of brought out into the sea and I kind of had to lower these down to replicate the look of it's getting deeper out in the sea whereas the terraforming that I was doing didn't quite replicate that so I had to use the move it um, tool here to adjust some of these across and I think it just gives that look of realism down a lot more a lot better actually in terms of um, the beach area um, rather than not having them at all it kind of gives that divided look and certainly when we're working on this area here which is purely just for the hovercraft it does break things up quite nicely and on a side note as well, I've noticed there's been quite a few people recently commenting on the videos saying they're from the island. So it's amazing that we're getting a lot more people from the island following the series. Hello to you people. Um, feel free to let me know what I've done wrong or what you want me to do next. Um, I've got a location in mind for the build past this. Um, there'll be one more episode in this area and then we're going to go somewhere completely different. Um, and hopefully this that episode will bring back a bit of the uh, the British summer um, feeling because we are pretty much at the end of summer now here certainly in the UK so that's going to be the last ditch feeling of what it feels like to be on a holiday so um, look forward to that that'll be in a couple of weeks time um, but yeah that's where we are we're now just working on this little segment here so there is a another bit of land that comes out and it's um, got a few buildings upon this but we won't be working on that today we'll work on that next time round um, and again I wanted to make things look realistic but also feel realistic so we put a slope going down here um, at the other end of the, the sort of port area um, I didn't actually notice a lot in terms of buildings for this there is a building on this segment we're just working on uh, but there's obviously nothing in terms of a building on the actual um, the sort of water, the, the sort of concrete area anyway. Um, it's all above the land and you walk down the slope to walk to the ferry, which I assume is that you're then met by someone who will um, give you your, or check your pass to make sure you're able to go on it. And it's not something I've ever been on before, a hovercraft, certainly not this particular one in the Isle of Wight. Um, if you have, let me know in the comment section below, is it worth the 10 minutes I assume the costs are probably more expensive um, but for a 10 minute journey across it's you know sounds quite fun to be honest so if you have been on the hovercraft before do let me know in the comment section below what did you find how did you find it was it fun was it good let me know This next section I did sort of reduce the time of the time lapse because my recent collaboration with Paradox Interactive was showing how I built this particular building using procedure objects. So the link in the top right hand corner will show you how I did that. So check that out and check out the rest of that video because PO is an amazing mod. And if you haven't personally tried it, I'm hoping these two, these two videos I've been doing little tutorials um, with Paradox will show you that it's not so daunting to use after all it's actually quite a fun mod once you get used to it so check that out because it is really really fun to play around with and you can create some amazing creations check out the cinematics of the link in the top right hand corner now this is the other station of the ride pier so what we're doing here we're trying to basically hide these windows and doors and i wanted to try and find some brickwork to do so just to cover it up and fortunately these are almost the same texture as the building itself in fact i think there is just a slight difference in the color um, but we just block those doors off to make things look like um, they are not functional i didn't want to have all these extra doors which obviously 
is difficult when you're working with PO. You can't hide away certain things like that so easy. So you have to be clever sometimes. I thought that was quite a clever way of hiding away some of the area that we don't want to see in the building. And I actually think that the station itself was has, has been probably one of my most successful PO builds. Um, not only because it looks good, but it actually works exactly as I wanted. And the shape of this particular station um, really does work well for this area. The building itself obviously is not exactly the same shape as it is in real life, but I think it looks very unique, very different um, for a station. And talking of a station, we're now going to be placing down this station. Now this station unfortunately will not be functional in terms of people stopping and moving around. Um, it was too difficult to add in and sort of get it to work. So this is more just a, a cosmetic station, so to speak. Um, so we're using the plop of asphalt. It doesn't matter because we're not going to have people actually standing on here. Um, but I still want to make it look realistic. So we're going to add in the, the um, plop of asphalt here to create the right height. Put a few steps in because obviously the building at this end is a little bit higher than it is at the other end. Um, so yeah, just adding a few little bits here and there. We're going to use the wall again here as well, um, carrying on the same colour to hide off this segment. Um, obviously the train track itself still has the fence around it, which isn't realistic because you wouldn't be able to get to the train itself. But, you know, we work with what we've got, don't we, in this game. So we're just going to add a few extra bits here um, to try and hide away the, the ugliness of what's left behind with the uh, plop of asphalt. Um, and I do find these little bits quite interesting. It's a, a little bit of a challenge, I guess, in a way to um, try and hide things and make things look a little bit more realistic. Um, obviously, it's a shame that you can't have these bits as functional. Um, there are ways around these situations, but sometimes you have to just deal with what you've got and sort of just you know do what you need to do. Now, this little segment here is the bus and taxi sort of slip road. Um, off from the station so we just broke a bit of the road off here um, just to make that and we're just going to detail this area but I'll leave you with a little bit of music whilst we work on this and we'll catch up very shortly see you in a bit So this next segment, I wanted to try and do something a little bit different. The actual area here is quite old. Um, the whole ride area isn't a very modern looking area. I know the building does lend to the fact that it is quite a modern look, but I wanted to try and make the street look a little bit more old and rustic. So we're using these old stone walls, which I've been looking forward to using for quite some time. Um, and trying to copy a sort of a, a look that is quite common 
in the um, the ride area so just using some of these stone walls to separate the the road and the pathways etc um, adding a bit of the foliage as well around the area just to make things look a little bit more exciting and different um, and yeah just make it look a bit more presentable I guess and I tell you what the introduction of these networks have been such a game changer for me um, I mean the fact of how quickly you can now place down walls and the curves you can get is really really good the I mean thinking back the way that I used to do it back in the day using the uh, prop line tool etc obviously still fantastic modern I still do use it in situations but when you're working on something like this it is a lot easier to use the network you can sort of move things around you can do so with the nodes and it just makes life a little bit easier for me personally um, and here we're just going to add a little uh, planter area for some more plants um, don't worry about the clipping what we're going to do is basically just going to play it um, plop over some foliage and some trees and bushes etc um, just to do so and another thing as well that I've been using quite a lot is using well breaking down and learning a bit more about the networks for example there you saw to create that gap where the zebra crossing is I just created two new nodes on the actual uh, wall itself and then deleted in between the two um, rather than having to delete the whole thing and start from scratch same way you do it with the road you can just do that which um, saves you a lot of time a lot of effort and just makes life easier um, and in this segment here I had to use the prop based um, trees and bushes and there are quite a few nice ones on the workshop now um, rather than having to use a bush because if I was using one of the bushes it would clip to the terrain itself the good thing about these props flowers and plants is you can actually raise them above the ground which obviously work perfectly for this now we're adding some of the stains onto the road and paths I do like the texture of the standard road and pathways here but you need to add a little bit of the decals I feel personally um, just adds to the look makes it look more appealing more realistic so that's what we've done there and you know if you just use the page down button like we have done in the past and just get it just to show through maybe one or two clicks up just makes things a lot easier now we're going to add in this little cafe as well and the actual road itself here is a little bit different than it is throughout the main street of Ryan. It's a little sort of side road to go onto the, uh, the pier itself. Um, so we're just adding in that here as well. Now, as you'll see, there's only 900 odd people on the island at the moment. And I have been working a lot on, I guess, sort of feature areas rather than building up sort of housing estates, etc. So we do need to work on that. Um, my question for you is what area of a large residential area should we work on next? Um, we could carry on with the Fishbourne area and build that up, moving on to cows, um, or we could just stick where we are here and um, work on the ride housing estates. But I do want to work solidly on an episode just purely building up a big housing estate because not only will that look realistic, not only will it increase our residents in the area, but it should also what should enhance the, um, the movement around the map, the people that are walking around and just make it look more realistic and that's something we are lacking a bit here. Um, I have used a bit of the, um, the event generators and the PPGs to try and get some more people over, um, certainly for the cinematics, but I want to have a realistic look and have a lot of people around. And I know this seafront will eventually become a lot more crowded um, because this main strip of the high street here has a lot of shops a lot of houses around it so once they're in place and there's more people to attend those areas obviously naturally we'll get a lot more people around and I've been surprised with the number of people walking across the um, pier as well because we did add in and clip in some buildings on the actual pier itself so we are getting people traveling across the um, river, uh, sorry, across the sea on either the train or the actual footpath and cars obviously going across there at all, as well to actually go to these shops etc. So I'm hoping that will carry on um, we can add a few of the um, 
part generators as well to try and bring in more people so let me know in the comment section below guys what or what area of high residence should we build upon next and with that said that brings us very closely to the end of this episode I think the plans for the next episode will, like I say, carry on on the little area we haven't touched yet, which um, is where the car parking area was. We'll work on that. And then, like I said, there's an area that I want to move away from, which I'm currently building on now, um, which um, will be a very different, different area. But like I said, as always, let me know what you want to see being built next. What can I recreate on the island that you really want to see? Let me know in the comment sections below. Other than that, guys, thank you all for watching. I know there's been a lot of new people recently, so if you did enjoy the video and you want to see more, be, please, by all means, hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button as well if you enjoyed it, if you didn't do the opposite. Um, other than that, I will catch you in the next one. Have a good weekend, and thanks for watching, and all the best. <laughs>